yeah. So scripts, what's the? Yeah, the the general first question is why why using scripts at all, um, and why not just stay in Jupyter and use Jupyter notebooks, um, for yeah. what you're doing, mm. and. Yeah, I think the the main reason why moving away from why well why to you move away from Jupiter is essentially if you need to run your um, notebook or you would need to run your notebooks multiple times with multiple different parameter settings and so on, or if you want to make uh, them um, more modular and more easily used uh, by other people um, as mm -hmm. this is no longer just one script to replicate some data from a paper, but this is becoming library functions mm -hmm. that can be used for multiple different purposes and yeah. so on. So as soon as the complexity inside the inside your um, Python notebook starts to be that you need yeah. to be careful in which order you execute um, cells and so on. At that point, you kind of start to think about, okay, maybe I want to create scripts. I want to modularize my code. Um, but the biggest biggest thing for me at least is using different, or using, well, yeah. multiple different parameter sets um, and potentially for more expensive uh, computations. Yeah. So you can't just run them in a for loop. Yeah. So basically getting someone, if someone sends you a Jupyter notebook and says, modify these few lines to make it um, work, that's it, not good. Yep. And the, that the, person start, may be you. You the, may send the, it to the, yourself. The, that's kind of um, yeah the situation where I, ha I have a script that works for something and now I need to modify it. And <laughs> even if I have it under things like version control, um, it, the file that I'm currently working with will be modified and it might not work for the old anymore. And I need to have a copy. And then I do some co some modifications in the one file, but not in the other copy. Mm. And uh, it gets messy. Yeah. So especially things where... Um, you want to add add um yeah you know, where you want to add flexibility uh on what's being uh, what's the inputs where you don't want to have a mm -hmm. well the please 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 uh the enter enter the file name for your file here in the Jupyter notebook these kind of things are yeah. things where it's a lot better if you have the have it as a script and can use input parameters for the script. Yeah. So do you want to see, well, I guess that's what we just talked about here, Y scripts. So how do we make these input parameters? Should we get straight to a demo or is there anything else to talk about beforehand? Um, I think we can essentially take, um, well, the preparation uh, for, for the first example, for the yeah. first example or for the first exercise Yeah. and just walk so I'll walk through it a little bit or walk okay. through the preparatory yeah. steps a bit. So for t for this lesson, how much is type along and how much is demo and how much is exercise? Um, for exercise one, I think um, the idea is that um, we'll show you how to download and put and get the uh, get the data into your into your Jupyter instance. And okay. then the rest of that exercise is essentially yourself doing it and okay. converting it. Yeah, and I think we have good solutions for everything here. So you can also do it as a follow the solutions instead of figure it out yourself. Okay, and I think there's also a bit of a roundabout way of downloading the files here. So we tried very carefully to find a way that anyone- Works for can, everyone. <laughs> anyone can do scripts sort of from the command line without having to know how to use the command line in advance. So in reality, most of us would do this slightly differently, but what we're doing here is designed to be the like a simple way of everyone can manage it. Okay. Yeah. So, so the first thing is, um, or yeah. So what's up here on my screen? Okay. 
Or do you want to share your screen to start off? Um, can also do that. Okay. Uh, yeah. uh, let me just need to. Um... Okay, I'm switching to you. There we go. So essentially where we are at the moment is we have a Jupyter, or in general, we have a Jupyter notebook and we want to get a uh, Python script out of it. And Jupyter actually in, in itself already that already gives the gives us options to do that by save and export notebook as, and there you can simply say executable script, which is a Python script in the end. Um, there's one thing that you should uh, keep in mind when doing that. Optimally, you remove any mag any magics beforehand. Mm. So all these um, time it and similar commands should be removed. The export does allow to use them, but then you need to have additional imports that those files normally don't have. And it just makes things a lot more complicated. Um, so as a general principle, remove all magics before you export uh, a Jupyter notebook to a Python, a Python script. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then there are there is of course the other option that if, um, I think we would normally take. We would normally just go to the command line and use and be convert, which is the same as what's happening with the. Oh, with the menu item, mm -hmm. but more convenient to someone who is more accustomed to the command line. Yeah. Okay, should um, I start doing it? You can actually start downloading the um, the uh, yeah. files. I change and... back to my screen. Yep. Uh, let's see what's the right order for my windows. And there are multiple options. What? Uh, how you? can get the a downloaded file into yeah. your uh, Jupyter instance, um, depending on your operating system and where you start your Jupyter lab and so on. Yeah. Uh, it is it's um, easier or a little bit yeah. more compl complicated. So the easiest is download the, this. The one to... here, I'm downloading it with the web browser. This link okay. here. So it says it's downloaded. And now I come and, to Jupyter Lab. Yep. And to be sure that uh, well, if if you if you know where your Jupyter Lab is, you can download and you can download directly to the directory that also works. The other option which is probably easier is if you click on the uh, upload button. Yeah. Sure. Two to two further right. That one. Okay. And then you can navigate to your downloads folder and just select the file and upload it to your yeah. JupyterLab instance. So, I know this is ridiculously complicated um, yeah. if you know what you're doing. Um, if you are not entirely sure or more of a beginner, it's the simplest way to be on the safe side that this is going to the right place. Yeah. But anyway, here I have it, weather observations. Yep. So the point is I can now open weather observations in Jupyter. And well, now I would give everyone five minutes to just okay. try, mm, uh, the... try the, okay, try this the, exercise. Or five to ten minutes to try the, uh, try this exercise, or yeah. from step, yes, essentially from step two onwards, because okay. step one you have already done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or, should we uh, go to five minute pause? Yeah, I think that would make okay. sense. Yeah, so if this was trivial, trivial for you, I'm sorry, but well, believe me, it's probably not trivial for everyone. So see you soon. Bye. Hello. So, um, yeah, yeah as, assuming most people managed to uh, get this converted and had it run. Yes, it doesn't produce any out any uh, <laughs> directly visible statements. Um, it's just producing an output file. It's producing a weather.png file that is in the same folder. 
and that is um, essentially what you would see, what you also see in the Jupyter notebook if you run it. Yeah. There was um, a good question from Twitch chat. Any preferences or experience working with VS Code versus Jupyter Lab in these kinds of settings? Uh, no, admittedly. Um, I have never used but, but we can VS Code the question, for Jupyter Lab versus some other editor or environment. Well, I mean, for the conversion, uh, the, th the thing is, um, in the end, I would say it, it doesn't matter what editor you use. Uh, the problem here is that I I have no idea um, how exactly you export or you convert Jupyter uh, notebooks in VS Code into Python files. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are tools to do that. Yeah, or I'm almost certain, but I haven't ever used it, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I mean. In practice, most of us would probably use, be doing this from the command line using the NB convert command and then editing it in an editor instead of in Jupyter Lab. But well, this is a simpler starting point, we think. Okay, so I'm coming back to my screen now. Mm -hmm. And what do we do now? So um, let's see. Essentially, this was the exercise. So command line arguments with sys.argv. Yeah, um, this is uh, essentially just a demo. Um, uh, so in this in this um, script, you have a couple of different arguments uh, that, or a couple of different things that you could change. One thing is um, it has a fixed start date that you that is being in, inserted this uh, 1st of um, June 2021 and the end date was the 1st of October 2021. Um, it also has a fixed uh, has fixed input and fixed output argument names. Let's and see. this is all stuff that so well here these are the fixed yeah. dates programmed yeah. in. Okay. This yeah. is all things that you might want to change in your analysis for something or in your image generation. So you, you might want to um, change the start date to beginning of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. might want to uh, output, give, give the output file an actual name that reflects what's in there in the end. Yeah. Because at the moment it's weather. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, that doesn't say anything about what's actually in there and um, what plot this is supposed to be. Yeah. However, it's kind of inconvenient to every time change the code itself and it's prone to lead to errors where you change the one but didn't change the other and in the end you have no idea what your what which file was producing or what which uh code was uh what which file actually contains. So um Changing yeah. this to command line arguments has the advantage of making the code more flexible mm -hmm. um, and allowing you to essentially run it just from the command line with, with different inputs. So and it's the like... most basic approach here is um, the sys package from Power of Python. The sys package gives you a bunch of tools that uh, yeah, have to do with the system. Um, like, for example, what additional input arguments are given to the um, to Python upon starting it? So, like here, can we see this example? Uh, sys. Yeah. So, pandas. You could yeah. essentially open the Python file that was generated in your in your Jupyter lab. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Did I export it myself yet? I think I didn't. Doesn't seem like it. Save notebook as no. Export. Uh, there. Save and export notebook as. as... Executable script. Okay. Further down. What? Yeah. Uh... Oh. Why did it not save it in the current directory? Because for some reason it saves it probably in your downloads again. That's. I don't know why it does that. Why? 
Okay. I well. assume it's essentially X. Uh, well, worst case, uploaded from your downloads. Okay. So here we go, and I open it. Yeah. So if you put in the import .sys statement in the top, so that you are actually importing it. So um, should I be doing this, or is this the exercise? Is this type along? No, the, the, this is this is um, either demonstration or type along. Okay. So the I'm exercise adding... is uh, doing it with a system that is more flexible and actually better for your scripts in the end. Okay, so people should be typing along. So I'm adding import sys, which gives us a thing. Ac access to the sys, to, uh, sys package. And start um, date becomes sys.argv1. Yeah. Argv is uh, all the input arguments that are um, given uh, given to to the Python argument. So you normally normally know that um, the arg uh, that uh, Python um, lists start with an index of zero, but the index zero is essentially the Python file that is being executed. So in this case, it would be whether observations dot pi would all would always if this is called would always be this argv zero. So we give it the first and second argument mm -hmm. and give it an output file name. Uh, should I do, oh, up. yeah. OK, output file. Oh, I'll that should be for, uh, a bit it. further down. Well, here it shows it up at the top. Oh, it, uh, OK, yeah. And right, then... that wasn't. Okay, that was and then slide. all the way down, you replace the the safe uh, fig safe fig um by the weather pin or by your output file name. Name. Okay, there we go. Should I save so, it and try to run it? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do we save? I guess simply save. Python save. So Control yeah. S would have done that. So to run it, I do it from the terminal. Mm -hmm. So I will make a new launcher with this blue plus and come down and terminal session here. Mm -hmm. And it starts, and it's in the directory that I started Jupyter Lab. So it should be here. Yeah, and if you scroll a little bit further down, there is a uh, an example command. Okay. In the there is an example yeah. command that that we could use now to run it. Python weather observations dot pi. Uh, oh one oh three two oh two one two one. Oh. Should I run this? Yeah. Okay. So the arguments um, that are passed in uh, are separated by, by spaces. Mm -hmm. So whenever you um, have any uh, any arguments that have spaces, uh, it becomes tricky. Yeah. Okay. Well, it took a little while, but worked. Yeah, so... mainly probably because it downloads the data again. Yeah. So at least in my on a Linux and Mac computer, the ls command will show what's in the directory. And, and you also see it on the left in your uh, Jupyter Lab. Oh, yeah, I see Spring. Should I click it to open? Yeah. Oh, nice. So, so yeah. Not bad weather. <laughs> At least temperature wise. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so well, this yeah. works. Mm -hmm. We now can put in additional, uh, well, put in the start date. Um, we can put in an end date and a output file. Yeah. And, and is this better well, than modifying the script every time? Uh, I would definitely say it's better than modifying the script because if you modify the, uh, the script, you are bound to have typos in there um you can't you can't really uh add it. You, you can't really change additional things in the in the uh script um 
without having to recreate or create a new version of it. You can't save what the save the file that created your um that created the certain uh, certain figure, yeah. and like this, you can essentially stay save that command, and this command gave that figure. So I only need to need to kind of keep track of the commands I was using, and not also keeping track of all the ver all the versions um, yeah. that were being used. Yeah. And I guess we can even write a script to run the script with different arguments and stuff like that. Yeah. But let's not get there yet. So what problems do you expect when using this approach? So what is sysargv? Well, it works OK for three arguments. It can be a bit hard to remember the order. Like, does the output file mm -hmm. come first or last? Uh, uh, and what if there is, say, 10 arguments or something, and I don't need all of them? Yep. And then, I think the the, la the last is actually yeah, the most important. So if is. you if you have optional arguments, as long as long as you have fixed uh fixed arguments and all arguments are needed as inputs, yeah, then this works okay-ish. Um, it you you might get into the yeah, position problem, but I think the biggest issue is if you want to have optional arguments. Yeah, and their tools like um, ArcParse, DocDoc. Click. Uh, there are a lot of different libraries that can give you really nice input parsing. Mm -hmm. um, all of them essentially also give you uh, some additional uh, functionality, like provide, providing you from what you set up a help uh, help file. So you know all all these tools where you have tool minus minus help, and you get an information on how the tool is to be used, mm -hmm. and all these um, libraries give you essentially um, something like that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. ArcParse is the simplest of these. Um, it's built into Python. So. And it's built into Python, so you don't need anything in addition to it. Yeah. Um, the others have a lot of additional uh, functions normally, um, but we will stick with ArcParse for now because it normally does most things that you might need. Yeah. And personally, I always use arc parse because it's built in and I don't have to worry about making additional like dependencies. dependencies if I wanted to yeah. be standalone. But so yeah. arc parse. Yeah. Yeah. Arc, arc parse uh, is essentially structured that we, you create an argument parser. Should we see the example here? Here we yep. go. So we make the argument parser object. Yeah, you don't have to type along here at the moment. Uh, this will be part of the exercise in the end. And this is just an, exa an example how it looks. So you, you essentially, um, you create an argument parser. Yeah, there's a comment in HackMD. So uh, yeah, right now, just listen to us. You'll have time to actually do this in a bit. So yeah, OK. So we make the argument parser object. Yeah, you make the argument parser object, and then you set the function, the arguments to your argument parser. And arguments have uh, a well, have, have two different. There are two different types of arguments. There are positional arguments, which have a fixed position, and they, their position is uh, dependent on where uh, on when they were added to the argument parser. So the first is at position one, the second is position two, and so on. And there are optional arguments. Optional arguments are the things that in Linux you get with minus minus something or minus value. Mm -hmm. um, and they you uh, those you specify by minus minus name, space, or space, and the argument that you want to put in. We have an example below. Oh, here, yep. like python birthday.py. Yep. Well, helps an optional argument here, even if it's automatic. Yeah, help is an optional argument that uh, doesn't take any value um, and is automatically generated by arc parse. Um, with optional arguments, you can give a default value. Um, and something that is really nice with, um, oh, and there's actually a mistake here. The type should be str, 
mm. string is not Python okay. that um, yeah. I need to fix. OK. Uh, but um, the nice thing with um, specifying the type here is that you are you don't need to convert anything. All input arguments that you normally get with uh, sysargv, for example, are all strings. So if that is supposed to be a number, you first have to convert it into a number. Otherwise, it will use it as a string, and you can end up um, with sometimes with odd results uh, if there is an auto conversion in some way. But with ArcParse or the other libraries, you commonly specify what type a certain argument is, and it will at least for the for most simple types, it will convert it into uh, from the string, essentially. So do the conversion automatically. And then um, once the, you have defined the arguments in your function, you say, well, parser.parse args, which is essentially telling it, OK, take the sysargv um, input and follow all the rules that I've set with that arguments and um, produce the arguments in here. And then you can essentially access all the individual arguments by args dot and their name, or um, in the case of date, it would be yeah. the minus minus argument. I'm not entirely sure if you can say args dot d as well. Yeah, Richard, do you know that? Arg, let's say that again. If you if you would say args dot d for the date, I don't the... think that would. I, I think it's, it doesn't work either. But, I've always used the full name. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, but but this is how it how it works. Yeah. And that allows you to yeah make make it make the parsing more robust yeah. and just in general more well better. And yeah. it automatically generates this nice help message, uh, which lets others know what they have to put in which yeah. is also quite useful. Uh, yeah, so, so should we go to the exercise? Yeah. Uh, we have until 50 of the hour, yeah. So if we give 15 minutes for exercises, then there's about five minutes to wrap up and mm -hmm. see what advanced stuff you might want to read about later. OK, yeah. so. Um, Yes, yeah, so this exercise two I'm putting into HackMD. And see you in 15 minutes. 50, 15, 40, 50. Uh, okay, we have a bit less than 15 minutes. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hello, we're back. So we have only a few minutes until we are, we go to the break. So let's go straight to it. So what did we get from here? What's the point? Well, so we essentially uh, are now able to pass multiple arguments uh, in a fashion that we can understand what each argument, is, what each input is. Um, we have a help argument. We have a help, and yeah, that that makes reading the command the command lines a lot easier, and also using them. Mm -hmm. um, so even though these look long, it sort of makes sense. These uh, look mainly long because of the because it's URLs that are being parsed. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and it really is not that hard. Like it's something that can be done to every script. And things like click are even easier to use than arg parse. But what, where does this start getting difficult? So what about this line here? It's yeah, that, that, that is where it's starting to get huge and where we need to think about something else. Yeah. Um, at, some, at some point, if you have too many more or less necessary arguments, um, you might think about trying to use a con uh, some config files mm -hmm. uh, where you can store your general um, configuration and then overwrite some things with the with input arguments. Um, yeah, but so 
so what's our proposal here? Um, there is this YAML format. Or, yeah, well, what, no, it's not about the format, but the idea. The idea is essentially having, in, having arguments and values in some form. And YAML or JSON are common forms how to how these things are being structured. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, the idea is you could put all of the general information in one file, and then you run your program, and you just need to give it this file. Yep, and it knows. And there's an optional exercise here which we don't have time for if you wanted to try some of this. So yeah. with that said, there's some extra stuff to read, but that's basically it. So what's the summary? Summary is essentially we had we went from a Jupyter notebook to a, to a Python file. We made our first uh, excursion into um, how the command line works. Um, and we have now the possibility to write scripts that can be used, for example, on an HPC system where you can um, combine, well, where you can run multiple different versions in a, yeah, in a, in a larger script, uh, again, that gives certain input arguments for, e for each run. Yeah, okay. So we're off to the break then until uh, uh, two minutes past the hour. So see you then. Bye.